We now return to Mega Man. In the previous episode, I talked about the first season of the 1994 Mega Man animated series. Now, fast forward to 1995, I'm going to talk about Season 2. So why don't we jump to the first episode of Season 2, folks? Terror of the Seven Seas. Dr. Wily is attacking battleships at the ocean. Not only that, but also dismantling them and also stealing their best pieces for him to build a new powerful warship. Dr. Light then informs the Admiral about the situation. The Admiral tells Light that he lost five battleships and is going to cancel the battle cruiser Freedom. Mega Man tells him that he just needs a few recruits to join his ship. They manage to find four survivors who happen to be Wily's bad bots in disguise. They attack the Admiral's ship and captured his crew. Here's one of the best lines in this episode. When Gutsman kicks Rush overboard, here's what Mega Man says. You had it, Gutsman! Nobody does that to my dog! Wow, Mega sure is pissed, folks, and believe me, you do not want to piss him off if you mess with his dog. That is when he gets his robotic ass handed to a Lechman. And gets tied up to a missile until he contacts Dr. Light to send Eddie to give him an energy tank. Meanwhile, Roll is on board Wily's new sea fortress and enters the computer room to send a transmission to Dr. Light. Mega Man and Rush arrive at the sea fortress. They meet up with Roll until Wily alerted his robots to stop them. Mega Man then contacts Dr. Light about the schematics. Light tells him that a huge blast of plasma power could destroy the power turbines, causing a chain reaction to destroy the fortress except he doesn't have that much power. There are some funny moments in this episode with Bomb Man getting blown up by his own bombs, and Gutsman breaking down doors while chasing Mega Man. Hmm. I guess Mega Man was trying to be creative in this episode to get rid of the Robot Masters in a funny way. And a fight scene with Mega and Proto Man. This was the only episode to have Mega Man copy Proto Man's weapon, and also four of the Robot Masters from the first game were featured in this episode. Mega Dreams. Dr. Wily invented a dream transmission to enter in people's dreams and gain control of their minds. He sends Gutsman and Cutman to the mayor's dreams, telling him to go to City Hall and get his secret passcode out of the vault and fax it to Cutman. Next, Wily sends Cutman and Gutsman into the police chief's dream and wants special information, the name of the head of security at the Space Research Center. With the passcodes and the information Wily needed, he heads for the Space Research Center and places a portable dream transmission in the cargo bay to infiltrate people's dreams of anybody he wants. He also sends Proto Man, who impersonates Mega Man, into the security commander's dream and said he's going to destroy the research center and sends his troops to destroy our beloved blue hero. Not Captain Planet, you Kraton! Our beloved blue hero Mega Man! However, thanks to Rush's cleverness, he was able to take pictures of inside Wily's van. Dr. Light manages to build his own dream machine to counteract Wily. Overall, this was a really weird episode. Showdown at Red Gulch. A meteor has landed on Earth and a couple of scientists went to check it out. That is until Dr. Wild and his pokey scumbots have captured them, making them dig up for meteor fragments in the old mine, which makes Wily's robots super powerful. Mega Man and Rush arrived to the mine and were easily defeated by the super-powered slime bots. However, the fragments have side effects which causes Wily's bots including Mega Man circuits to short out. Dr. Light found a way to use the negative energy to not only short-circuit Wily's bots, but also neutralize their superpowers by using the speck of dust from the meteor fragment. Not to mention there were some really good action scenes, especially the face-off with Mega Man against Wily's super-powered bad bots acting like one of them old spaghetti western movies, and Mega Man sounding like Clint Eastwood. You looking for me? Night of the Living Monster Bots. In this episode, Dr. Wily creates a batch of robots that look like classic movie monsters to terrorize the village and the city, bringing them to their knees and pay billions to call off his monster bots. Wily sends Cutman and Gutsman to London, where they pick up an actress by the name of Evelyn Ray, who happens to be Mega Man's favorite movie heroine, where she'll be doing a movie at Hampton Village. But when she refuses to be in Wily's film, he calls out Dracubot and turns her into a vampire. And if that wasn't bad enough, Dr. Light becomes a werewolf bot, which I find really weird turning humans into monster bots. However, this was yet another weird episode. I also noticed some mistakes as well, such as Gutsman's face all red, not to mention the back of Cutman and his blades have incorrect color schemes. 
Here's a fun fact, folks. Did you know both the music in this show and the music from Monster Rancher were reused for the Ocean Dub Dragon Ball Z? I am not making this joke up. Because when I was uh, looking for an episode of Dragon Ball Z on YouTube back in 2007, I found an episode of the Cell Saga dubbed by Ocean, and I was so shocked to hear a background music that is so familiar. Robots. This is one of the best episodes. Dr. Wily's scumbots are attacking the parade, and Mega Man comes in to stop them. That is until Proto Man came in to help Mega Man? What's wrong with this picture? Okay. But anyway, Mr. Deacon thanks Proto Man to save the parade, and Mega Man explains to him what's going on. Proto then tells Mega to give him a chance, plus fight on the side of good and reunites with his brother. But it turns out Proto Man was pretending to be a good guy, which was part of Wily's plot, and also planted a chip that scrambles Mega Man's circuits so that he wouldn't bother Wily to overthrow the popular candidate. I knew that Proto Man would be mistrusted. When I first saw this episode as a kid, I thought he would fight alongside with Mega. But I realized he was nothing but a mistrusted asshole, thanks to Wily himself. Oh my! He's right, Proto Man! I'm a bad scientist! <laughs> At least there were some best scenes, such as Mega Man and Proto Man in the park wanting a brother relation, a fight scene with Mega Rush and Roll against Wily's bots, and the best scene for last is this. Sentimental, brother? I owed you for telling me about the Scrambler chip. This episode featured the only appearance of Needle Man, Heat Man, and the last appearance of my favorite robot master, plus the creator of Mega Man's favorite, Alekman. Curse of the Lion Men. This has got to be one of the worst episodes in the series. Dr. Wily's bad bots have discovered a cave filled with mummified people who happen to be humanoid lion creatures freed from their curse. Dr. Light explains about the curse, that is when Tar and his men turn everyone, including Dr. Light and Wily, into lion creatures to take over the Earth and destroy Mega Man. Mega, Rush, and Roll head to Dr. Light's hotel and use the device he built to turn everyone back to normal. I also noticed some animation moments in this episode, such as half of Mega Man's arm and head are through the net, Brightman's mouth not being animated, Cutman's rolling cutter is behind the right side of his arm cannon when it should be in the middle, and when Mega Man and Rush jump over the window, they kind of look faded. And I really didn't like the artwork in this one as well with the animation. This episode featured the only appearance of Starman and the Star Crasher, Brain Bots. Dr. Light reveals his latest work he has finally finished after almost a year, an experimental robot called BrainBot who has a genius supercomputer brain. Light sends Mega Man, Roll, and Rush to California at a secret research center. Wily's bad bots attack Mega Man and captured BrainBot so that Wily can use him to come up with more brilliant plans. There are some funny moments in this episode with BrainBot being annoying with his intelligence and the scene with Wily and his scumbots telling him to shut up. <laughs> I notice BrainBot's design is similar to Mega Man and barely resembles Quint, only with glasses. There is also a scene with Mega Man making a reference to a famous pool player. Minnesota Fats, eat your heart out! I notice a part with Mega Man dodging the blasts. He has this anime moment while he was losing his balance. Well yeah, cause to me this cartoon looks anime since the art and animation of this show was done in Japan. This episode featured the appearance of Dark Man, Mega X. Dr. Wily attacks the plasma power plant to steal Lightanium, a rare material that Dr. Light has developed and wants it for himself to create a powerful plasma blaster. When he failed and tries to formulate another plan to steal them, a portal appears and two visitors came out who happened to be, that's right folks, the Reploids, Vile and Spark Mandrill, who came to the present to help Wily. Wily then makes a deal with Vile, giving him the plans. The two Reploids head for the Plasma Power Plant and easily overwhelm Mega Man, Roll, and Rush. That is until you know who shows up, ladies and gentle YouTubers. Mega Man X. That's right, Mega Man X himself comes to the rescue and saves Mega, Roll, and Rush from Violent Spark Mandrill. He then meets Dr. Light, his creator, and explains him about both Dr. Kane and also Sigma, whose desire is to destroy all humans. Plus, he even told Light that the Lightanium he invented is worth billions in his timeline, so that Violent Spark Mandrill can bring back the Lightanium to the future and finance Sigma's war against the humans. 
I've already talked about X in my previous review of how he looked being close to his game design, plus looking manly instead of being in his early teens. Not only that, he is reckless and is faster to resort to violence. This episode was meant to be a sneak preview of the Mega Man X animated series, but sadly it was never made due to this show's cancellation. This episode was the last appearance of Snake Man and the Search Snake. However, this show gets a lot of hate from people saying it does not follow true to the games, Proto Man being the villain and the characters have muscles. So what? I mean, it's not that big of a deal how the characters in the show look. And you know what? I don't even care. I absolutely loved the show as a kid back in 1994, and I still love it to this day. Unfortunately, the show came to a complete stop before Ruby Spears fully planned a third season. I also read online why the reason this show got cancelled is that Bandai had cut several toy lines because they were not meeting sales expectations and had supposedly been putting merchandising pressure on Capcom. Also, the Season 2 box set includes the first episode of Season 3, Crime of the Century, as a bonus. Overall, it's a really good show, even though it doesn't follow true to the games, but at least the characters are dead-on accurate. Now, if you excuse me, I have to jet out of here!